Good afternoon, everybody. I thought I would share with you today um, some of uh, the things that I'm doing uh, right this moment uh, in the event of hopefully making a another project um, out of uh, my playing, as it were. But I thought I'd give you uh, a little uh, demonstration on what I am doing with transfer paints um, and violin and heat and leaves. So I love leaves, I love anything obviously natural and beautiful and although I love eco dyeing it takes quite some time before I get the de desired effect so I wanted a quick fix uh, as I always do because I get bored very quickly otherwise. So um, I decided I would do some um, transfer dyed leaves. So basically all I need is leaves from my garden and I want leaves that have got some lovely veiny textures on the back can you see that's the front of the leaf which is beautiful of course but the back is where the texture is this is a hydrangea leaf and that is what I want today so I found all sorts of different leaves um, you can see some of them I've already used so this is a, a hydrangea um, no it's not it's a geranium leaf one of my faves is this. This is a polyanthus leaf, or you can use primrose ones, they're slightly smaller, but isn't that just beautiful, the texture, the texture on that? You could even use cabbage, you know. Uh, and I have used also, I have used some um, ivy. Yes, it doesn't look quite so textural, but it still comes out and it's a, it's a lovely shape. Um, but my favorites are, um, these ones that have got the lovely texture see this one's been used this is a fuchsia a south african fuchsia leaf which is rather quite lovely and this one i have a tree in my garden but i haven't a clue what it is but it's beautiful it's got big white flowers on it at the moment but again it's got amazing texture if i turn it like that and i love the shape of it so there's loads of different ones you can use um, again, uh, all different geraniums. I've got loads of different geraniums because I collect them. Um, so there's different shaped leaves there going on. So there's lots, lots to choose from. So um, to do it, we need to mix some paint. Now transfer dyes uh, can come in liquid form or in powder. Uh, I tend to buy the powder ones because they go a long way. Um, the liquid ones, uh, which are obviously ready mixed for you, are great if you want to use the same colour over again and you've got that same colour all the time. With these, you might get it weaker one time, you might get it the stronger colour the next time. You know, it just depends. You have to play a bit. But I quite like that because I like surprises, <laughs> as you've probably gathered now. So, transfer dyes. Um, I get these from Art Van Gogh uh, or Colourcraft, but Art Van Gogh, I normally, who I normally get them from. Um, and also the thickener as well that comes with it, okay? And I can't remember the proper word. I wanna say in Vanco, but it isn't that. Um, but if you need to know, you can ring up Van Gogh and they'll tell you, thickener for transfer dyes, okay? So what I've done is um, I mix um, half a scoop, this is a wee scoop here, half a scoop um, of the thickener to one scoop of my transfer uh, dye, mix it with a couple of pipettes of water, you might need three, and you want it to be the consistency of acrylic paint. Yeah, so that's what I've done already. Um, if you don't thicken it, it's just like a watercolour and it won't stay on the leaves, okay? Uh, and then you won't have a, a very good print at all. So once you've done all your mixing and everything, I now I'm going to show you how I do the next thing and how we move on um, uh, to get our final print. So I'm just going to pop this down here. So hopefully you will be able to see what is going on. There we go. So. Here is my leaf. This is my hydrangea leaf. There's the back of it. Obviously, that's the front, and we want the back. And then I get my brush. You don't want to put too much on either. If you overdo it, 
it can be a bit blobby um, and you might get something like this but actually it is okay and I'll show you in a minute why it, you know it's not too bad but preferably don't overdo the paint on the leaf okay so that's it I've done that now I'm going to pop it on my piece of paper just very carefully I'll just get a bit of tissue and then just press it down firmly I've also done this on a spongy surface as opposed to a flat hard surface that way you'll get a, a better and more even print so I've done that okay let's lift up and let's see what happens oh yeah that's lovely so you see isn't that really gorgeous I absolutely love it so I've done lots and lots uh, like that and sometimes they come up better than others but these are some uh, geranium leaves and there's my um, hydrangea leaves at the bottom there and um, that is a rather large ivy leaf and then this one is the, few, the South African fuchsia leaf um, and I do have some more prints somewhere I'll show you the prints of that beautiful tree I love that isn't that just beautiful and that one that's the um, the, um, the daisies the large daisies uh, leaf which I thought was very interesting as well so there you go you see there's so many things you uh, so many different leaves you can use to get so many different prints right so now I want to transfer once this is dry I want to transfer my print onto um, my piece of fabric, which is um, Vileen. This is um, Craft Vileen, um, which is um, made by Vlyseline, uh, and this is S80. You can get others, but I don't get such a good effect with um, other ones. I like to use this one um, most of all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you how we print. Now normally what you would do is you would have your iron on the hottest and the driest, no steam, okay? And what you would do is you would put your leaf print on there, upside down, okay? Leaf print upside down, put a bit of grease proof paper over the top and then you would iron and you need to keep moving. That's because most people have irons at home um, the reason why I'm showing you this is because that's what you would have. I'm going to be using a heat press, which I'm going to show you in a minute, but not everybody has a heat press. So ironing, keep moving it. Don't keep it still. If you do, you'll end up with the uh, base of the iron printed onto your piece of work and you don't want to do that. Uh, you also need to hold on to it and just keep checking it. Yeah, to keep checking how the print is doing. Okay, so... Um, now I'm going to show you how I do it with the heat press because we like to have a little reveal, don't we? So I'm going to show you this little one because you've just seen me do it. All right, so let's just put that, put that down there. So here we go. Here's our first one. And if I move it over to the heat press, there you go. You can see. So I need a bit of violin. So here's my violin. Here is my print, I'm going to put that on there, pop it on the heat press, move that one out of the way, pop it down. Now this is on 200 degrees, so it just shows you how hot it is. And I literally leave it on for about 30 seconds. Uh, you can do less uh, and then the print won't be so, um, so bright. Um, yeah, it's entirely up to do it, you have to play. But with an iron, um, the print is probably not as exact as it is on here um, so you know, depends what you want really I don't mind either so anyway I'm going to lift this up now I'm just going to show you so we can have a nice nice reveal there so here we go look at that is that not lovely and um, you know look at all the detail that's there not bad is it really I know there's you know, it might be a little bit blob of the paint, but that doesn't matter to me because when I start stitching it, it'll all come alive and it'll be beautiful. Okay, 
So that just gives you an idea and there's all sorts of different ones. So that was the fuchsia, uh, the South African fuchsia leaf. There is a geranium and there is the lovely polyanthus leaf. And lovely, look at the textures and the detail. I absolutely love it. So it's amazing. And I wondered what you would be able to do with it. So coming back to me, okay. So just to uh, show you what you can do with these when they're finished. So um, I have done some before, of course. So this is a rose leaf or rose leaves. Um, and, um, you know, exactly the same process, did it exactly the same way, painted on the back of the leaf, put it on paper, let the paper dry, and then apply heat uh, to it onto your violin. And then I've stitched it. I've used black thread here, but you can use whatever thread you like, whatever color you like, but do not use uh, polyester threads. That is, do not use polyester threads. They must be cotton or rayon, anything, any natural thread, um, because we use a soldering iron to cut away the excess um, violin, and that would melt the polyester threads because obviously it's synthetic. Uh, so I, again, use cotton on this one, but I do also use a lot of rayon threads because they're just as lovely too. So once you've done that, you've cut it out. Now you've got it, you can apply it to anything you like. Um, so like I did this one, you can see I'll put my leaves on it. This isn't a finished piece of work, but it's just to show you, you know, you know you've got a nice 3D effect going on there. And don't you love the, the white bits underneath? But... If you wanted them not to be white, you could paint your violin first, um, like with Koenor dyes, something like that, or a watercolour paint, and that with a very subtle colour, um, and then you'll get an, you know, a lovely different colour coming through, um, which would be very interesting as well. So that's what I've been up to today, and um, thoroughly enjoying it. Got lots more to do, uh, lots more playing to do. I could be here till midnight. But I hope you've uh, enjoyed watching my little bit of nonsense and uh, thank you for watching and I'd like to say sit, sew and create and I will speak to you again soon. Bye bye for now.